Welcome back, Jim. Welcome. Thank you, Jim. Um, we will move on, I think, to the approval of the meeting minutes for our last meeting. Chris informs me that this is largely a formality because our last meeting was fully recorded. So we do still need to vote on it, though. So uh, do we have a motion to approve the meeting minutes for our last meeting. I, I would uh, provide a motion. I found it very interesting that it was a uh, all audio version of the minutes, um, but I'll move to approve them. I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, I think that we got everyone. There's any opposed say so. Perfect. We will move on to our utility master plan presentation by Chris, I believe. Yeah, so Chris and Neil and Reed will be presenting that. I'll start off and I'm going to start to uh, share my screen. Make sure that this can happen. All right. Uh, I believe everyone can can view this, right? Yep. We can yep. see your screen, Chris. Okay. Um, we wanted to share with the with the Public Works Advisory Commission what we shared with the Orm City Council in a work session last Tuesday, September eighth. Um, we have two new council members, as you may know. Um, we have a uh, Terry Peterson and Jeff Lampson, and uh, we wanted to bring them up to speed as to where <clears throat> where we were or where we have been, at least with the master planning process. Um, as you all know, we have recently um, rehired Bowen Collins and Associates to update our master plan. Um, believe it or not, it's been it's been over. Five, that's been about five years now. Um, we started working with Bowen Collins back in 2014, and uh, we spent almost two years working with them before we uh, have our master plans adopted. At the beginning of that process, uh, we um, created the Public Works Advisory Commission, and uh, which you all sit on. Some of you are original members, and we appreciate your long-standing uh, devotion and dedication to the city of Orem and uh, to this this committee and commission. Um, so we made them aware of that uh, how how the the commission was created back about uh, six years ago now, maybe almost seven years. Um, that time uh, when we presented to the city council, we made them aware of regulatory requirements uh, that were some were new and some were becoming more stringent as you all uh, are aware our water our stormwater and our wastewater uh, utilities are all heavily re regulated under the uh, department of environmental quality and so it's it's incumbent upon us to revisit this master plan on a regular basis and make some adjustments accordingly. Um, our infrastructure um, is also aging, of course, and uh, much like our homes, we need to we need to give attention to uh, uh, to those areas that are failing or that have have to be replaced or repaired. And then, of course, Orem is also growing. Uh, back when I moved here in Orem in 1994, the population was just over 60,000 people, and today it's right around 100,000 people. And so as these demands uh, create greater um, burden on our utilities, we need to address those burdens and, and in the form of adding uh, new components, uh, new pipe, uh, new parts of the systems, respective systems, 
and uh, make sufficient repairs or expand our capacity to be able to provide those services. So I wanted to give you this, this brief introduction. I'm gonna turn some time over to Neil after this, uh, who was going to talk about water and sewer. And then Neil will talk about stormwater. And then I'll kind of do the recap at the end. We mentioned that there are these requirements for regulatory requirements by the, the EPA in many cases. Uh, we have need to replace a, a part of our system that is um, has been uh, no longer serviceable or no longer has a service life. Um, our our sewer and our water systems, if we were to build them today, for example, would cost around three hundred and fifty million dollars. Our our uh, our storm sewer system, stormwater system wouldn't be nearly that expensive. It's not as um, extensive in terms of the pipe network and so forth. So we had to look at ways to fund the replacement um, of these facilities. We, uh, one of our board or one of our um, members at the time, our PWAC members, his name is Bill Pepperoni. You may uh, recall Bill. And for those of you that didn't know Bill, he's a former city council member in the city of Orem. He's also uh, spent most of his career, I believe, in uh, Provo City. One thing he was very insistent on before he approved uh, or wanted to recommend our master plans to the city council was that we uh, created impact fees for these utilities. In other words, impact fees are used to uh, expand our utilities to be able to create capacity uh, that is uh, created by these new developments and so that they pay for their burden on our system up front and they buy into our system. Um, there was a, an extensive discussion regarding bonding versus pay as you go. So back in uh, 2016, um, there was kind of, there wasn't really an appetite to bond and, uh, and it was thought that we should try to follow the philosophy of paying as you go. And so rate increases were developed uh, to support that plan and to implement uh, the master plans. Um, we've received a lot of public feedback. We reached out to the community via social media. We had multiple public meetings in the forms of open houses. We met with the city council in work sessions multiple times and we presented to the city council in the formal public meetings. Um, that we also submitted flyers um, and informational um, flyers and, and so forth to the public. Uh, so I, I think our outreach is quite extensive, although I think we can continue to improve that process uh, during this phase two. Um, so, we then uh, ex executed the plan and we had that uh, plan adopted for each of the three utilities back in 2016. Master plans, uh, once you adopt the master plans, it's important that you continually review them, that you implement them, of course, and you try to stick as closely to the schedule as was originally planned. And then you need to, to reevaluate and then also um, get to the point where we are today, where we may, might need to revise that. And so there, there are um, many reasons why we feel like we need to revise those, and we're going to hit those at the end of this presentation. So at this point, I'd like to turn the time over to Neil, who is going to go over the water utility as well as the sewer utility. All right, thanks, Chris. Uh, just like before, at the end of this process, our hope is to have the Public Works Advisory Commission uh, make a recommendation to the City Council. Our, our form of government in this country is sometimes not as efficient, but it's the best, best there is. Uh, but you get two new council members and some changing ideas. And so that's why we're, we're here uh, bringing this to you so that at the end of this process, the Public Works Advisory Commission will make, uh, we're hoping will make uh, a recommendation uh, to the City Council. And so 
uh, we'll we'll review some things that many of you have seen, but we'll we'll just uh, move forward with uh, updating, if you will, uh, our existing plan. Some of the highlights were uh, and still are a new storage reservoir and, and additional well capacity and water reuse. We are well into the design uh, and planning stages of all three of those. Uh, <clears throat> we're just waiting on some property uh, information for the new storage reservoir. And uh, once we have that in place, we'll be able to move forward with some test drilling to place a well near there and the, the water reuse project. Uh, we were close to moving forward with a bid and then uh, obviously many of the projects uh, with many of the consultants um, had a had a uh, pause in some of their efforts uh, due to the COVID. So the next slide uh, shows us some build out pipeline improvements in the city and when those uh, are planned to have happened based on some modeling efforts. You'll notice that a lot of those uh, are outside of the 10 year window, um, but nevertheless, uh, they're coming down the road. And uh, keep, keep going there. So our, our original master plan looked at the capital projects in the next 10 years. And you can see the list here uh, totaled up to about $45 million. We are, uh, when you have a pay as you go plan, you save up all your money for that $10.4 million storage facility, and then you design and build it. And those are $2014. <clears throat> well, we are well underway of saving those dollars and and being ready to build that uh, similar to the water reclamation facility reuse project same with the automated meter infrastructure project uh, well underway with those projects neil can you can you tell about uh, the ami project about how far we are there yeah sure we've got about seven thousand meters installed around the city and all of the originally planned nine communication towers. And once we do some data testing on those, uh, which we are in the very depths of right now, uh, we <clears throat> anticipate uh, lighting those up and having the, uh, the coverage area tested so that we know uh, how much of the city is going to be covered, if you will, kind of on a micro cell phone tower uh, model where we, we just have to make sure that the whole city is covered. So once we have all those towers in place, we'll keep moving forward with uh, the installation uh, of those meters. Um, I, I just actually uh, got a, a, a sample of what it's like to be on the communication end of that with the WaterSmart software, which will be the customer service interface, similar to maybe some of you who had uh, other projects that we were testing out. And I got a, an alert that said I was using more than my average. So things are, things are moving along. <clears throat> okay. And then water reuse, um, that's that's heavily regulated. We've gone through the process with with the state on that. When do you anticipate that we'll be um, breaking ground on water reuse? Well, we were hoping to have been breaking ground uh, around now. We wanted to wait until the peak golfing time was out. We do have to make a connection across the golf course, um, but uh, we had some delays in getting approval from the state. Uh, and in selecting a, a final filter system, if you will, so the final stages of design could occur. 
Uh, and so I would anticipate that we could bid the project out in the next couple of months, possibly build that infrastructure right uh, before the, the ground freezes as far as the, the pipeline across the golf course. And then it will take about six to nine months to actually build the, uh, the final facility to, to deliver. And maybe by next year, uh, mid, mid, uh, mid irrigation season, we could see uh, finished reuse water uh, placed on the grass. All right, uh, with the master plan, we also did some build out planning that totaled out at about $78 million. Uh, we, we've always anticipated that there would be an update. Uh, and so while we keep that long range plan in place, we recognize that uh, here we are again and, and we're, we're updating and revising and uh, things that we thought uh, would be required or still required. You'll notice that storage component before was around $10 million. Uh, we are operating in a, uh, in a deficiency right now. Uh, as far as our city needs go uh, for our own, we are, we are borrowing physically from the Central Utah Water Conservancy District uh, storage that is not uh, the cities, and so that's an important step to become uh, sufficient in our own storage, not only because uh, it's the right thing to do, but the state also has uh, place requirements that require the city to have uh, a given amount of storage for the residents that it serves. Any questions up to this point? Feel free to just holler out if you do. Uh, by way of uh, reminder, we spent a lot of time uh, on, a, on an appropriate level of replacement. Uh, we valued the system at about $360 million. If you want to replace 2% per year or, or an item every 50 years, depending on how you look at it, uh, you come up with uh, $7.2 million a year uh, capital spending plan. And this is going to set the stage for the next uh, two as well as sewer and stormwater, where that 2% is a, a value that we felt was a, a good value to go towards. You know, pipeline <laughs> systems may last longer than 50, but sometimes they might last less. And certainly components uh, within your system last less. Pumps and other wear items are certainly less than, than 50 years, more along the lines of 10 to 20 years, depending on what you're talking about. Neil, this is Casey, and you may be getting to it. Um, obviously, this has been collecting funds since the rate increase has uh, been in, uh, affected. It, it would be beneficial to see a table of the funds collected to date and what projects have been um, uh, the, the funds that were expended on what projects that would be a yeah. useful table for me to see. Yeah. Yes. We, we, uh, we will anticipate with the financial portion uh, of the, the plan uh, doing just that. Um, okay. Obviously, when you look at that storage, we haven't built it, but when we get to the next <clears throat> couple of slides, you'll see the years in which we plan to fund it. Well, we have followed those plans. Uh, so this is a good slide here. Do you see those orange bar graphs right there in 1920 and 21? The, let's start with the blue line was the original funding that we had at the time. The black line up above was a representation of our 2% per year. Um, the red line was the path which we had planned to get to that 2% per year instead of jumping up straight in 2016 
to get up there, we were, we were ramping up. You can see on those orange lines that uh, we had planned to, to fund in 2019, 20, and 21 that, that storage facility. Well, this year, uh, prior to the budget, the city council pushed pause on those planned rate increases. So this year, our rates are exactly the same uh, as what they were in 2020. So that bar graph that you see uh, is, is flat <clears throat> across 2020 there. Um, so that money that you would originally plan to have been there is there. When you see that magenta line in 2018 for what we would affectionately call well number 10, that money is there waiting to be spent. Uh, we, we had to kind of do that storage in the well in conjunction with each other to uh, maximize the efficiency of that. <clears throat> Um, we also, I think we also have money for water reuse. We do. Uh, water so, reuse is also funded. Uh, and so, interestingly, uh, Casey, you, you say, where's the money been spent? We, we've been spending money. Let's not pretend we haven't. But you could see that if we had that uh, light blue bar graph, that magenta bar graph, and those orange uh, stack bars saved up in the bank. That's, <laughs> that's the bulk of the water money that uh, is there waiting to be uh, expended on the projects that were recommended. The green line there <clears throat> has been spent as it's been coming in. We, we started that project actually a little earlier uh, due to having some additional funds uh, in, in, in our savings account that we decided there was some opportunities to get started there. So if you took half of that green line and put it in 2019, that's about uh, what was uh, spent in 2019 and, and, and so on. So Casey, like Neil said, when we uh, start working with Lewis Young, um, who's our financial planner, we will uh, identify all of those dollars that have been saved and spent so you can see what, um, the accounting for all of that. On the sewer side, <clears throat> a big part of uh, what the treatment plant is facing is a modified water quality requirements. Uh, we, we use the term nutrient removal. Uh, and nutrient removal and struvite kind of go hand in hand because of the chemistry of, of what struvite is within the plant a buildup of, of a hard substance that is nearly, if not totally impossible to remove, but just has to be uh, replaced. Uh, pumps, pipelines, different things. And, and you can imagine that the removal and, and replacement of those pipelines when they're underground crossing several different uh, pieces and parts at the water reclamation facility are, is extremely difficult. And then hydrogen sulfide corrosion. Uh, if you can imagine when the sewer water becomes turbulent inside the pipeline, it generates some gases. And so uh, we have identified different areas in the city where those would be susceptible due to various factors. And uh, I'm happy to report that that program is, is going along very well. Uh, what was once about a hundred thousand dollar a year uh, budgeted item to replace extremely uh, critical uh, pieces of pipe that were uh, discovered to be nearly uh, catastrophic. We are getting ahead of that uh, to the tune of uh, about one million dollars per year, and so that's that's been a really good uh, program. And and you're right, Casey. Eventually we will be able to show the, some before and after on, uh, on seeing the progress, whether it be map-based or, or numerically and, and dollars, that um, where we were and where we are. Neil, with the master plan process, uh, 
back six years ago, um, we as a staff understood a lot of our deficiencies at the water reclamation facility. Um, it's being recommended now that we update our capital facilities plan as well. Maybe, can you speak to that? Yeah, so at, at, at the time in 2014, 2015, we had just completed a major upgrade at the water reclamation facility. Uh, <clears throat> and so we didn't feel a need to uh, update the facility plan directly. We did place some dollars, Chris, if you'll move forward, uh, knowing that we have equipment and pieces and parts to to uh, to replace. If you'll go one more and then uh, come back to this one, I, th I think there's a, a spot. So you can see the, the equipment here, water reclamation facility. We, we knew of some of those items that were coming up. Uh, and, and this round in 2020 to 2021, we're recommending to do a facility master plan uh, in tandem with this plan uh, so that um, the water reclamation facility as well will, will have that level of detail in, in the study. And that is uh, a, a, a proposal that we will accept from different firms uh, Bowen Collins may or may not uh, be a be in contention for that. We'll have to see, but we will release a request for a proposal on that in the next couple of weeks, so that uh, they they go hand in hand. So go back, Chris, to the collection system. When we modeled the collection system, uh, remarkably, <clears throat> the collection system in Orem. Is, uh, is in really good shape. You see a big city there with some very small number of improvements to be made uh, for the, the sewer collection system. Uh, that's a compliment to those who have gone before us and the planning that has occurred uh, there. You'll, you'll see down in the southwest area, there's some improvements that uh, we anticipated happening. The developer is building uh, some of that out um, and uh, you'll see uh, SS2 there in 2018. That's part of uh, a project that we are bidding out uh, as we speak, pretty much, um, with the spring water lift station, uh, with anticipation of growth in that southwest area. <clears throat> it's interesting. Uh, we had made the plan for the southwest area based on uh, certain assumptions. Uh, as you're all aware, the temple made an announcement uh, that that made some changes in uh, the city council's thinking and the planning uh, side of things, and uh, we had to readjust some of those uses. And so it's it's a it's a dynamic, moving target sometimes when you're talking about a growing city, um, and and we're no different. So. We, we feel like we've finalized some numbers there and some zoning uh, for that area. And uh, I think we have a good move forward plan with that. All right, we talked about the facility projects. Uh, those are, are in the works. Um, we've got uh, some good projects listed there. We feel like doing a facility master plan uh, right now will also direct us uh, for future improvements. You'll, if you've kind of paid attention to the news, you'll notice that Provo City is looking at, you know, a $200 million price tag to address their nutrient solutions. Salt Lake City is looking at a $500 to $750 million uh, price tag to redo their treatment facility. And uh, we've got some numbers in place that we think will uh, address that. But um, the, the study on Utah Lake is ongoing. And so where that exact uh, nutrient criteria will land, we're still not sure. All right. Uh, the next 10 years produced the $19 million. Uh, you can see the, the, the areas 
in the collection system and the facility, uh, other areas, and then the Southwest Annex improvement. <clears throat> the developer is paying for all of those improvements to be built in that area. And then through the impact fee reimbursement plan, or we've called them coupons, if you will, uh, they will end up getting that uh, money back that was spent over and above their initial impact. Okay, so uh, $2014, we ended up at about $30 million. We anticipate uh, that, that we'll come back to you with a recommended financial plan and a rate plan uh, that, that has a modified and updated uh, fee uh, program that may uh, or may not include some borrowing based on the uh, city council's mindset for um, adjusting those generational projects being paid for by more than just someone within a 10-year window. <clears throat> we have the same uh, mindset that uh, we had moving forward. Uh, we had the collection system at about one and a half percent replacement, the treatment plan at about two percent. A 50 year design life, uh, you know, a, a, a filter or, a, or something that needs to be replaced won't have. Uh, a 50 year design life, but certainly a clarifier and, and the large concrete structures will have a, a, a hundred year design life or longer. So this is a, a, a number that we feel good if we get to and along the same lines of the water, uh, you'll see the, the bar graph that shows uh, where we were and uh, where we want to get to. And the red line was, was the plan to get there. Um, I think that's it for the sewer, if I'm not mistaken. Any questions on water and sewer? We did kind of move through it quickly, uh, but happy to discuss online or offline any amount of detail uh, that anyone may have. Okay, I guess you're tagging, tag teaming to me. Yeah. So uh, the stormwater system is uh, a little unique, a little different from um, from water and sewer. Uh, has some different needs. Uh, first of all, one of the one of the main concerns that we had when we went through the master planning process before was that we had wellhead protection areas where we wanted to protect. The, uh, the water that we pump out of the ground for use by citizens. Um, and we have, uh, as the city developed, sumps were installed throughout the city to handle uh, storm water. What a sump is, is it's basically a big hole in the ground and water, you've seen water flow down the gutter and into the hole and the water just percolates into the ground. and. Uh, eventually makes its way uh, down deep into uh, into the ground and has the potential of of getting contaminated or of contaminating our our drinking water system if a uh, certain uh, if, if care is not taken. So what we've done is what we did was we identified areas throughout the city which we call our wellhead protection zones and identified the sumps in those areas and have made plans to pipe the water out of those areas and convey that water through piping system uh, to other areas where it could be infiltrated or uh, down to Utah Lake. That's, that was a major component of, of the stormwater master plan. Um, we also um, wanted to, uh, had, had a component where we would be replacing uh, pipes as well, where we were using old irrigation ditches that, uh, that that were falling into disrepair. So that was system replacement. Then, then we also have uh, had, a, had a concern with the most recent iteration of the, of the uh, master plan, which was uh, tweaked or, uh, or updated in 2018, 
when we learned that the West Union Canal Company, which is a major conveyance system for, for much of our stormwater in certain areas of the city, they decided to get out of the business. And because, uh, and the reason they decided to get out of the business or are working towards getting out of the business is because they're, they, they've done very little to maintain their canal and, uh, and the major shareholders in that company were concerned about the liability associated with that. So those major shareholders decided to walk away from that company. And there are some, there are still some shareholders with that uh, company that still convey uh, stormwater, but not as much. However, it caught us off guard. We had not anticipated that. And so some, uh, our, our master plan was, was uh, changed, reprioritized and projects added to abandon uh, the West Union Canal. Um, the, the portion of the canal is primary, that was of most concern was between University Parkway and State Street. Um, and so the, those, the projects that were identified to abandon the West Union Canal totaled $5 million in and of themselves. So that was a significant change to uh, the, the master plan. Uh, the slide that we're looking at now sh identifies the wellhead protection area. As you can see, the the colors uh, there's a um, there are several different zones. The bright yellow is a 15 year zone. There's a 250 day zone, uh, a three year zone, and it's the areas that we want to get out of are those yellow to red colors. Uh, the purple area is where it's. Uh, it's probably okay to, to, to convey wastewater, I'm sorry, uh, uh, stormwater. Uh, and so we, the master plan, um, if you go to the next slide, Chris, shows a, a series of projects, prioritized projects of, of where we need to put this piping system in order to get out of the wellhead protection areas, the red lines identified our highest priority to be done within the first 10 years uh, and then the orange ones are priority two and then the yellow ones are priority three um, we we have uh, uh, to to, uh, to address uh, casey's question about well where have we spent the money um, a lot of it similar to saving for the uh, the storage tanks and the ami um, we have a lot of it just sitting in the bank waiting for the uh, projects to be designed to abandon the West Union Canal. Um, but we have done some of those uh, red priority projects um, that, that was on that, that previous map. We've, you probably remember a storm drain line being put into 400 north between Main Street and 800 East. That was one of those projects that was done. We're currently installing a line uh, uh, down in South Orem, uh, close to near 2000 South. It kind of winds through the neighborhood there. Uh, this, and, and again, this is all on a pay as you go basis. Uh, so we've used the, the, the funding that we've been saving to, to do these projects and pay for them um, 100% um 100 percent of the cost right now uh, next year we have uh, plans to take care of some nuisance flooding issues that have been affecting the spring water park area down near the treatment plant um, where during each spring we've had flooding episodes that haven't caused property damage yet or yet are, cause us concern we've bumped a priority two project up to a priority one and have fully funded that. So we are chipping away at these high priority projects, but the bulk of the funding is sitting there waiting to pay for the uh, West Union Canal. And I should add a recent concern of ours is also the West Smith Ditch Company, which shares, uh, which shares the same canal with the West Union Canal um, for, for, most of its uh, conveyance system, they too plan on getting out of the business. So we're, it, it's becoming more and more important for us to, uh, to, to make better plans uh, and, and to address it quicker 
than we were anticipating doing. So this process will be looking much closer at the importance of getting out of those canals um, and how to fund them using a combination of pay as you go as well as bonding. And we'll be relying on, on your input to help us uh, make a recommendation to the city council um, at some point in the future. So- um, Reed, I, I had just one quick question. On, on the map, only because it's impacting us, there's a big project going on on Palisade Drive right now. And it looks like you're installing sumps along Palisade Drive. Can you yes. tell me just a little bit about that? Uh, those, I believe that those pumps, um, after consulting with our city engineer, they were, they were within that uh, wellhead protection area, but it was in the 15 year, I believe it was the 15 year zone which he felt comfortable there the, when we balance the um, the costs versus the benefits and the potential risks, he felt that that was far enough outside of the, of the, uh, uh, the critical zone of the wellhead protection area to go ahead and allow those in, in uh, along Palisade drive. And so is that part of the, the, of uh, stormwater master plan um, expenditures was that was that included in part of that? Um, yeah, or is that uh, I I can't answer that definitively, Casey. It, it w part of the master plan is that we had miscellaneous project money as well. Okay. And when we when we do when we have some road rehab projects that we do and we need to repair sumps or put pretreatment manholes on sumps, we dip into those funds. And it's likely that we dipped into the miscellaneous construction portion of the, the, the master plan uh, to, in order to add those to that project. So we, we, try to, we, we try to improve the utilities on these roads when we know that we're going to do an overlay. So if there are needs, if there are sewer system needs or water system needs or stormwater needs, we take care of them, even though they weren't necessarily a high priority project um, for in, in the master plan, we still want to take care of it. And we did have some money that's been, that was, that was earmarked specifically for that purpose. It competes with all the other needs throughout the city as well. And and this was a was a, a, an obvious need, so funding was found or made available through that miscellaneous construction fund. Thank you. So uh, the the ten year improvements uh, totaled uh, eighteen million dollars for our top priority projects. About two million dollars per year is what the the target um, that we were uh, that we were targeting. The system replacement value of one hundred million. Uh, two percent per year means that we need to have a annual budget of around two million dollars, and so we we a similar chart that we used for water and sewer. On, on the next slide, Chris. Reed, if I could mention also, this this is quite a bit lower than what uh, you you saw in the in the water and the sewer side. Water was around three twenty five or three fifty. Sewer was just under three hundred uh, million and stormwater is 100 million well keep in mind that our our we don't have a built out stormwater facility or, or infrastructure and so this is a replacement value for an underdeveloped stormwater uh, utility so we're looking at this amount just to maintain what we have today but we're also looking to expand it with this uh, pipe network so this is the uh, this is the the, the improved capital improvement budget that we presented to the city council and was adopted. Um, again, we were hoping we, our recommendation was to fund CIP at two million dollars per year, and um, again we we had that red line was what we were doing. We wanted to increase that, um, and in order to get there. We wanted to uh, we wanted to get there within five years. So rather than have a quick jump right away, we recommended slowly increasing the rates um, where uh, until we reached that blue line, which then would uh, 
rate increases would reflect inflation and we could continue to invest in our system at the tune of $2 million per year in present value uh, terms. And so stormwater was able to uh, have its rate increase in two or for this fiscal year, FY 2021. However, water, as Neil mentioned, water and sewer did not have those rate increases. Uh, the council was concerned a little bit and wanted to pause and reevaluate. The I should I should so what so what that means is stormwater reached the blue line this year. So as long as the city council continues to fund at the rate of inflation, this plan will be met. That said, with all of the issues that have been cropping up with the canal abandonment, there's a there's a chance that as we go through this, that the two million dollars per year that was recommended back in 2016 may not be adequate. That's a that's a that's a discussion that we'll be having with you as we identify these projects and the costs and how much we'll be bonding. Perhaps it perhaps it is enough, but there's a potential that it won't be, and that the rate schedule that we adopted back in 2016, where we're funding inflation from here on out, may need to be tweaked a little bit and a little more requested. Just a little potential foreshadowing. So thanks, uh, Reed and Neil, for uh, your presentations and your your review of, of these utility master plans. We've been asked uh, by the council and um, and the mayor to to come back to uh, to them uh, pro perhaps in in January or so with a proposal for new new rates and new master plans that have been updated that have been able to accommodate some of these concerns that have been identified. Um, we talked about this slide already. Impact fees are being reevaluated. Um, we have we have saved up some money from those impact fees, so those revenues will offset the need to increase uh, the rate. Albeit these impact fees will have a, a relatively small impact on the overall uh, rate. Um, we've been asked to reevaluate bonding versus pay as you go. There appears to be an appetite more so now than in the past to bond uh, versus to continue with the pay as you go plan or at least do some kind of a, a hybrid solution. Um, so Neil mentioned this earlier, an intergenerational equity. Um, I know that this, uh, this may be foreign to some here on, on this uh, commission. So I wanted to, to make sure that you're aware what we really mean by this. Uh, there are some components of our systems that obviously can be replaced in a shorter amount of time, maybe five, 10, 15, or 20 years. Whereas there are some components that may last 50, 75, or 100 years if they're maintained over time. And so those are the, those are the um, projects I would suggest that we need to target uh, to consider bonding. Um, we want to pay for those over more of an extended period of time because it's going to affect uh, children that we have that aren't even born yet, right? So, or that, uh, you know, we don't want all of the burden to be placed on those that are maybe retired now that, that will not receive any benefit from that. So we want to spread that burden across uh, a period of time. Perhaps it is a 20 or 25 year uh, bond that we would be looking at. Um, we've been informed by our financial advisor that our uh, bonding rates are perhaps as low as they've ever seen. Um, they're down in the 2 to 3% range right now. Construction inflation has been out of sight uh, in Utah in particular. I'm going to show you a slide uh, right here that, that uh, reviews this, discusses this. You'll notice if you were to look at the, the red line here, construction analytics, that's the, the main line that comes all the way throughout. From 2010 to 2013, uh, this, this index, so the base year was set uh, to 100 in 2017. So looking back to 2010, we were at about 80. And then over a three-year period, it only went up to about 86. So a total of 6% 
over a three-year period or you know roughly two percent per year if you were to look at 2014 to 2017 it increased from around 89 to uh, 100 in 2017 so that's about an 11 percent increase over a three-year period the last three years from 2017 to today we're looking at uh, from 100 on on the base year to about 115 in 2020 in other words it's gone up around five percent a year over the last three years um and so these rates are exceeding the rates for bonding and borrowing money and it, it seems to make sense that uh, that not only do we want to look at intergenerational projects for bonding but we may want to consider um, hedging inflationary uh, trends that that are in our market today and uh, so we felt that that was a, a critical component uh, when you're looking at borrowing versus the cost of construction we've presented to you dollar amounts hundreds of thousands of dollars millions of dollars in 2014 dollars so as you look at the index back here in 2014 that would have put us at around 89 whereas today we're at 115 so that that has increased uh well around 16 percent from the from those times uh from that time in 2014 we are going to be getting uh, newer numbers, new values from Bowen Collins and Associates uh, to present to you um, to consider. Uh, that'll affect our rates. Bonding will affect our rates if we if we choose to bond, pay as you go, and construction costs are also affecting our rates or, or affecting our ability to actually uh, to construct according to the 2016 plan. There have, believe it or not, there have been impacts of COVID as well on costs and the ability to perform by contractors, um, the ability to manufacture um, components and pumps, uh, uh, piping and so forth has been adversely affected by COVID. There have been significant delays. Um, uh, so here's a, a case in point is our fitness center and our library hall projects in Orm, they're both uh, adversely affected by the COVID, um, uh, by impacts of COVID, and uh, because there were delays in the ability to receive supplies and materials and equipment and so forth. So there are some things obviously that we could not foresee back in 2014 when these uh, master plans were put together. Um, and there, there, there is an appetite um, expressed by the council to look at bonding for some of these larger intergenerational projects. Of course, this is going to have, cause us to reevaluate the master plan uh, utility rates that would be supporting those the implementation of the uh, the construction of these um, of these capital facilities today. So we um, we are at, at this point right now. And, uh, and we look forward uh, to working with you on this. Um, I did want to mention that our, our rates, although you, you might feel that our rates are high, they're higher than they were. There's no doubt about that. But our rates, as we compare them against uh, uh, other, uh, other sister cities, these are 15 other cities around that, that we look at on a regular basis. We wanted to bring this to your attention that uh, specifically for these three utilities, our water rates um, are basically the second to the lowest. They were about lowest or second to the lowest at the time when we did this back in 2015 or so. Provo was really low with us. They've accelerated their rates even more than we have. So I think it's safe to say that we've been pretty prudent and pretty um we made a pretty concerted effort on targeting where we needed to be over a period of time with that said there are concerns by some council members that were perhaps too high or we've been too aggressive we're trying to educate them that indeed we are not um, we're not on the high end 
we're well uh, towards the bottom for water. For sewer, we're right on average. And for stormwater, we're right on average as well. So um, I, th I think that uh, that speaks volumes to our master planning process that took place back, uh, back six years ago, five years ago. Um, these are other rates here for garbage, property tax, and franchise tax. As you look at this table here, this combines all of those utilities, water, sewer, storm, and then also it includes garbage and property tax. Our property tax rates are, um, I believe, second to the bottom here compared as compared to Linden City. But as you add all of these together, it's a great, Orm's a great place to live with respect to utilities and fees and charges and taxes. Um, if you hear any negativity regarding that, we steer them to this to help educate them and make them aware that indeed we are very competitive, we're very conscientious, and that we are also implementing impact fees and we're making those that are coming now to pay as they come on board with Orem. So with that, um, we, we would like to entertain any other ideas or questions that you might have um, at this point. We don't have a lot of time left. We apologize for that, but there was a lot of information here. We hope you've had a chance to review it. Um, were there any comments or questions regarding where we feel the council would like us to go at this point? Chris, just a comment. Um, we've been impacted by the, the construction inflation as well uh, at Central Utah and see a very similar uh, impact. Um, and I was initially opposed to bonding, but now looking at that, I don't know if I'm, um, I'm much more neutral on that now and happy to look at that. But I do think that some of the construction inflation has been due to uh, the Salt Lake airport, to the prison construction, I-15 and Facebook. With those now wrapping up, we may see um, a little more accessibility to uh, contractors and their ability to uh, uh, give us better bids, but of course, no one can predict that. Um, so, just just a comment on on your analysis there. Thank you, Casey. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, so, with the construction of the the airport, what, these water reclamation facilities, as the ro result of the new nutrient uh, criteria that's going to be in place here shortly. And the plans for that, it's going to be highly competitive when those projects come online as well. COVID's kind of thrown, thrown us a, a, a wrench into all of this as well. Um, I did not mention this uh, earlier, but we are looking at uh, restructuring our relationship with Vineyard City. That's going to have a significant impact on, on our master plan in a positive way, where we, we may not need to put in some of these larger lines across the entire city. We are looking at renegotiating that uh, that agreement with Vineyard City. Neil or, or Reed also mentioned the canal abandonments. Uh, that, on the flip side, that's going to cause us to to really look significantly at some new projects that we hadn't really thought of in the past. So these are all uh, moving components of that influence our rates and our ability to to put in these uh, new capital facilities according to the these timelines. Um, I noticed that Carol had texted earlier. Carol, are you on? I am. I think I unmuted myself. Oh, okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I don't have the only comment I have is you've done a great job, and I and our family appreciate all you do for Orem. Um, I think it's great. I support it. And I don't know if you could pass the minutes if you had a quorum, but I certainly voted in favor of passing those minutes. So we, we did have yes. a quorum. We'll okay, add you so to that. Okay, and I, I do need to leave the meeting, but thank you so much for all your work. Okay, thank you. Uh-huh. All right, Devin, I'll turn the time back over to you to wrap up. All right, thank you, Chris. That was a very, very dense presentation, I agree, but good information for us to talk about, and we look forward to having the additional financial stuff from Bowens Collins. Uh, so thank you. When do you anticipate having a follow-up meeting ready on your side? Would a month be sufficient 
Uh, I think we'll need, we'll, we'll probably need six weeks, um, six to eight weeks, I think, before we have some significant plans and recommendations by Bowen Collins to be able to present those changes and modifications to you. In that, in that, in that time frame as well, we will also have met with um, Lewis, in, Lewis Young Robertson Birmingham uh, to review some potential uh, samples or examples of, of how bonding can help affect our rates in a positive way. Okay. So if we just go for the, the safer end and say uh, two months and do somewhere around November 10th or 17th, does that work fine for you probably? Yes. Would anyone have a preference on the 10th versus the 17th of November for our next meeting? Or another date? Perhaps the, the 10th, um, it, it's a little bit sooner. It's not as close to the holidays. 10th works fine for me. That works for me. Okay, unless anyone really hates it, you better speak up quick. <laughs> Okay, we'll do our next meeting on November 10th. Uh, 7 a.m. work for everyone still, I assume. Nod your head. Okay, seeing lots of positive nods. So we'll do 7 a.m. on November 10th. Okay. Um, any other questions that anyone wants to bring up before we adjourn? Okay, I motion that we adjourn for the day. I second it. All Thanks, great. everyone. Say hi. Hi. Thank hi. you. Thanks. Thank good you. To have Jim. Jim, back on the commission with us. Good, good to see you again, Jim. Yeah, it's good seeing you again, too, Casey. <laughs> Thank you. Have a great day. Thanks.